Um, the solution is you could take statistical synonyms instead, right? So um, if you don't have a thesaurus, you could try to build your own thesaurus by analyzing the data that you're working with. And the basic idea there is um, what I want to find is I want to find related terms. And of course, uh, to find truly related terms, you need linguistics. But a pretty good substitute for that is co-occurring terms. So if I have two terms, A and B, I could see, do they occur together unusually often? Right? Do they co-occur more than I would expect by chance? And if they do, there is a good, it's a good guess that they talk about similar things, that they refer to the same subject. So how could you figure out if two terms are statistical synonyms of each other? By the way, statistical synonym is not really the same as a synonym. Co-occurrence doesn't mean synonymy in the linguistic sense, but it is incredibly useful. It's actually arguably more useful than synonymy in the strict sense of the word. Right. So uh, I have two words, A and B. I could count how many times I see them together. And what does it mean, how many times? In how many documents I see them together. Or if you have long documents, you can chop them on up into passages or windows and count how many windows contain both the term A and the term B. And then I have similar counts for A by itself and a count for B by itself. And it's critical that you get to those uh, in the same way. So if the counts of A and B are based on a 10-word window, then the count of A has to be based on a 10-word window as well. So just be consistent in however you're computing them. So once you have these three numbers, you can start putting them together in various ways. Right. So. Um, this is the simplest way, uh, the mutual information. So you take the number of times that you saw them together and the number of times that you uh, saw them by themselves. Uh, by the way, this is uh, related to a likelihood ratio test. Right? So you can get a quick sense for what this means. Uh, if you divide every one of these terms by n, which is the total number of windows or documents that you have in your collection, then what you have on the top is the empirical joint probability of seeing A and B together, right? Uh, and on the bottom, you have the product of the marginals, probability of A times the probability of B. And when you take the ratio, this is known as the likelihood ratio test. You are testing the hypothesis, what is the chance that uh, these two terms occur independently of each other, right? It's a, it's a well-known statistical uh, test. So uh, there's a number of others, right? So we talked about the dice coefficient. I think this is actually missing a term. Uh, doesn't matter. Um, uh, the EMIM is quite similar to mutual information. You take the mutual information, multiply it by n. So our n is the number of term. Uh, it's number of windows, number of documents that we have. Uh, take the log of the entire thing and multiply it by uh, n of AB. I'm not going to spend too much time on them there, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how they matter in a couple of slides. So uh, these are just uh, these are just taken from uh, from from the book. These are different ways. The higher the number that you get, the more related the two terms are because uh, it's sort of the, the more unusually co-occurring they are. That's the way to interpret these things. 